Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Blackboard's 2020 Digital Teaching Symposium. Uh, my name is Scott Gamini. I am a county instructor with Davenport University. And today I will be discussing uh, data-driven online courses using Blackboard and Cengage Analytics to engage students. Uh, joining me in the chat is Alex Rainford. Uh, he is with Cengage and he will be doing the moderating in the question and answer and then the chat feature. Thanks so much for joining us. Before we dive into it, uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, like I mentioned, I am an accounting instructor at Davenport University, which is located in Grand, Rapid, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I teach a variety of accounting courses, uh, accounting foundation classes like financial, and managerial accounting courses, uh, taxation uh, courses, primarily for corporations, partnerships, estates, and trust. And I also do advanced and governmental accounting. Uh, I am also involved in Business professional, Professionals of America at Davenport University. We have a large student chapter for that. I'm an active member of the MACPA, the Michigan Association of Public Accountants, and the AGA the Association of Governmental Accountants. Um, I'm also involved in the VITA program. I know many of you may have heard of this, but it's the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Uh, and I also have a background from Davenport. I was a, a former student there. Uh, I have been teaching now full-time for about six years and I've used uh, Blackboard that entire time. So I've learned a lot from it and I'm excited to share with all of you uh, how I use Blackboard and then also Cengage within my Blackboard course. Uh, so agenda for today, uh, I'm going to, of course, show you my current fall 2020 semester uh, Blackboard course, and I'll hop right in. Uh, I'm going to be, the plan is to be flipping from the PowerPoint presentation and my actual live Blackboard course that I'm currently running right now. Uh, I'll show you the course setup, Cengage integration, and then uh, share with you how I engage students. Uh, then I'm going to get into the analytics piece of my presentation today. Definitely looking at the grade book and usage and engagement metrics that are available in Blackboard, as well as Cengage. I'm also going to uh, discuss how I use those analytics to improve uh, my course to meet the learning outcomes listed on my syllabus, all of that good stuff. So I'm hoping you will learn a lot from this and let's get started with my accounting courses in Blackboard. So I want to talk briefly about before um, I hop into my actual Blackboard course, um, kind of the, the ways I'm teaching, I guess, this semester. Uh, I know with the environment today, um, and whether you're an educator or an administrator or involved in academia in any capacity has changed quite a bit in 2020. Uh, for me, that means hybrid courses, online courses, asynchronous courses, and then fully in-seat courses too. So I do all virtually all of the uh, methods of delivery uh, instruction and I use Blackboard for all of those. So I'm just going to briefly explain each of the, the methods here. Um, hybrid course, what that means at Davenport University is we meet in person and then we also meet virtually through Blackboard. Um, there is, you know, the in-person component, the asynchronous component, um, but there's also a virtual component, meaning uh, we meet twice a week. Uh, it's 15 week semester either on a Monday or Wednesday or a Tuesday or Thursday. We'll meet once a week in person, beginning of week this semester. And then the second meeting that week, uh, we meet virtually live though. It's a live virtual session through Blackboard Collaborate. And that would either be on the Wednesday or Thursday this semester. Um, that's the hybrid, and that's where I'm going to focus my presentation today is how I engage and use analytics in that hybrid course. Uh, when I discuss this, you can use the, the methodology that I explain or use or I'm showing you in an asynchronous course or even in an in-person course. 
uh, for my in-person class, I had one and actually just wrapped up. Um, I use the analytic feature the same way, and I'll, I'll show you what that means. Um, I do want to spend a little bit time just because you'll see it in the Blackboard course that I'll hop into here shortly. Uh, I'm a big proponent of the sequential learning method. Uh, so you'll see that structure within uh, my Blackboard course. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit about it when I'm actually in the course. But the sequence method, I, I have some cornerstones that I've developed. I know many of you may have heard of it or are familiar with it. Um, but the cornerstones I kind of use and then implement into Blackboard and in Cengage um, start with early success, assignment order, and then uh, repetition. Those are kind of what I feel needs to be represented in my classes and my courses uh, to satisfy that sequential learning method. Um, and I will show you, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this slide um, talking about it, but I'll show you how I satisfy those cornerstones using Blackboard and Cengage to do that. And then I'll explain a little bit more about the, the cornerstones as well. What do I mean by early success? What is you know the, the uh, assignment order piece? What does that mean? All of that good stuff as I go through my, my Blackboard course. Um, I have an accounting background, so organization is, is big to me. Uh, I tell my students all the time, accounting is not math. It's not you know imaginary numbers and calculus and complex math concepts is really simple math, but it is organization. It is rule-based. You have to know what the rules are and then how those rules apply to, you know, specific situations of financial data. And then, and then you have to organize. And I apply that to how I set up my courses in Blackboard. And I'll show you what I've learned in my, in my years in teaching and using Blackboard, how organization is just so helpful. If you are organized and set up and you're, if you're organized and set up the very beginning of the semester, how much of an impact that is for students during the semester. Um, how you can spend your efforts elsewhere, ensuring that you are delivering the best possible, possible lecture or, or making sure students are learning the best possible way. Um, so organization is very important to me and how I do it in Blackboard I've developed over the years and then also how I have it set up in Cengage. Um, so I want, I'll want i spend some time showing you that here in a moment. Um, along with my Blackboard strategy, I will discuss uh, Cengage and how I use Cengage. Um, I know many of you are probably familiar with what Cengage is. They're a major publisher. They offer um, textbooks, uh, online solutions for pretty much every discipline that there is at or you know in, in college or at the university level. Uh, I my experience, and I will I will talk about it. I won't spend too much time. I'll focus with Blackboard. But my experience with Cengage obviously is accounting and finance and they use CNOW v2. It's the digital platform I have the most experience with, um, but they do have platforms for all of their disciplines. And I'll share with you how I integrate it into my Blackboard course, how that then generates a seamless experience for students. Um, and then also how that helps with rating, making sure everything is up to date, it's current, it is really an awesome feature. I could not have such an effective course without the Cengage piece and then also without it being integrated into Blackboard. Um, so I'm gonna go through my strategies in Blackboard and Cengage now here. I'm gonna flip into a current Blackboard course. I wanna just talk about the organization, the setup, show you that before I get into the analytical piece of my presentation here. Um, because it's just that important to have this stuff set up and ready to go. And then you know, during the semester, I can focus on the analytics piece. I have now the time. I'm not constantly trying to play catch up, creating assignments one week ahead of the schedule uh, to make sure uh, students have homework and stuff to do. Um, I can focus on the analytics and, and analyze those analytics and then use those analytics to, to make the experience better. 
Uh, so I'm going to hop into my course right now. I will go. I already have it opened. Um, I know this is familiar to many of you. I believe Davenport is using the most current <laughs> version of Blackboard. Uh, so this is the organization piece here is awesome. Um, before even getting to the course that you're looking for, they changed this whole method and I've enjoyed the changes they implemented here. Uh, so I'll show you, this is an accounting 201 class that I'm currently teaching. And actually uh, today is a Wednesday, the recording is a Wednesday and they just took um, a midterm this morning um, and it was proctored and it was through Blackboard. Um, so very, very fresh stuff here, but the stuff I'll share with you, the organization is stuff I've been using for a while. Um, so just a couple of pieces, and I'm not going to go link by link here because I do want to focus on analytics for this presentation. Um, the first thing I'd like to point out is I make all of my access, uh, I call it top level or high level access. Um, I'm not or don't use the module feature too heavily in my hybrid or even my asynchronous online or in-person in courses, I want the information to be easily accessed. So I like using the uh, course menu to do that. So I'll have, and you'll see many links, and I know institutions are different and you, and you may not be able to create links depending on where you're, you're teaching from. Um, but I like creating specific links and having those links visible at the very top level. So when students log in, they see this homepage screen here, they know they're in the correct class. I put all that information in the header in the description here. But then I have my important links, the links I want students to be using all visible right away. It's not buried in weekly materials and week six folder or, or someplace where they have to click four times to get to where they need to be. Um, and, and it makes them more familiar with Blackboard. They get used to it. They uh, are using maybe more of the features instead of just going to a weekly materials link and then to the modules they have to complete for that week. Um, so it's a little bit of a learning curve. You have to you know, be specific in the beginning with students and how to get to all this, where to go, but they learn quickly. Uh, so just the organization here, I have, in homepage link, um, and this is the integration piece which with Sengage, which is so awesome, um, but it is integrated into Blackboard, meaning students, um, once they are signed into Blackboard, are also signed into Sengage. And these links are all available through Blackboard, so they're not signing into Blackboard, and then signing into Sengage to do the homework, and then going back into Blackboard to watch a recorded lecture or get the notes. It's all through Blackboard. Uh, and with the integration piece, and it's very easy, I've integrated all of this myself. I'm not getting my technology department involved or asking Cengage reps to do this for me. It's all something I do on my own, very easy to figure out. But once it's in integrated, there's grade return. Once uh, assignments are completed in Cengage, much of it, if not all of it, especially for the accounting discipline, which is very nice, uh, is auto-graded. And, and those grades are returned um, into Blackboard where I have to report all my final grades. So that's an awesome feature. Having it auto graded um, is a huge time saver. And then I can spend more time on, on the analytics and, and making my lectures better. Um, so if we have time today, I may show you how, how the integration process works. Um, but with, with these links, I have the Cengage help link here is the next one. And I kind of put these towards the top because these are the links that students are going to use the most. Um, I have multiple ways for students to access uh, their homework through Blackboard. I always found if you only have one way for them to do it and they can't get that way to work, it's good to have, for them to have an alternative. Um, but the help link, I, I recommend in any Cengage project that you're using, or if, you, if you're not with a Cengage project, having a link in the menu for publisher help for technology, technical support here. If I were to click on that, it brings me or would bring the student to a technical support page. And I uh, tell my students, hey, if you have a technology, if you're trying to do homework for my class and you're nearing the deadline, don't email me saying your computer crashed. I'm not gonna know what to do. I'm not a technology, I'm an accounting instructor, not a technology instructor. You have to go through the Cengage Tech Help. And if you do that, and I make them do this, if they 
want an extension on a due date. They have to get a support ticket from Cengage. They have to show me that support ticket and then I may consider extending. But then other resources available here. Um, Blackboard specific resources. I like the virtual classroom, especially in my hybrid uh, format here. Uh, I made a top level link to access Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, which is where we hold our virtual sessions, which I'm sure many of you may be doing this as well. But where we hold our virtual sessions uh, once a week. Uh, so I add, added that link. There's no going to find that. I call it the virtual classroom instead of Blackboard Collaborate. I explain uh, specifically how to get into the virtual classroom. Um, and then the second way I have recorded lectures here too. I'll circle back to this, but all of the recorded lectures from those virtual sessions and even the in-person sessions are housed here, but very top level, very easy and customized and, and ease of access is key. Um, so I, I need to get in, before I get too far here, I wanna get into the analytics piece, but I cannot emphasize and stress enough of having this set up, having these links ready to go um, before you, you start the semester. Because if you're always trying to play catch up, then the analytics piece is just an extra and, and it, it's probably too much. I know as educators or administrators, you're always you know, doing 10 things at once, and it's difficult to balance everything. So analytics may not be something you would focus on because you're doing everything else first. That's more important. Um, before I do the analytics piece, I do want to mention the second way students access. And if you can do this with, you can do this with Cengage, but if you have other assignments, having two ways to get to what they need to do is always helpful. They can go through their, to their assignments through the homepage or through the Cengage Now assignments link and they, go into their homework or can access specific homework through this link as well. I've always found that to be very, very helpful. Um, and these are, I always have three activities per chapter. All three activities uh, are listed in a folder within the Cengage Now assignment so they can see every chapter here and then what activities they have to do for each chapter. And this is just uh, the sequence method um, visualized basically. There's the early success is the pre-assignment. They do that first. They have to do that first. I use prerequisites to establish order. They have to do the pre-assignments before the exercises. They have to do the exercises before the problems. Um, I, I set time limits on the pre-assignment because it's introductory. There's video clips. There's reading involved. They need to do that assignment first and then spend 30 minutes in it before they do the exercises. Once they submit, just take the exercises, then they can do the homework problems. But again, it all goes to the organization, the ease of access for the student. So having this all set up, and it's taken me a bit to get to this point, um, but hopefully me sharing with you right now how I do this. If you, I know you, you can implement this and then, then you can focus on the analytics side of Blackboard. And then also, if you're using Cengage, the Cengage analytics piece. Uh, I'm gonna go back into the PowerPoint just briefly, briefly here. And we'll get into the uh, course analytics. Uh, and, and really, you wanna, and I did it when I first started teaching, there's a lot to do, a lot in figuring out Blackboard, figuring out all the different LMSs. Um, but once you get it figured out, once you have your course set up from the very beginning, then this analytics piece can vastly improve everything you're doing. I mean, it has for me, um, and I'll show you uh, what I do first in Blackboard, what analytics features I use in Blackboard, and also what I use in the in the Cengage side of my of my course. Uh, so the Blackboard analytics, um, the ones I use the most is the course activity report, user activity report, and then especially these statistics report. And I'll show you how to get to these reports um, and how to get statistics report for particular items, which I have found to be huge. Um, the course activity, user activity reports, um, I use those mo mostly for attendance, making sure students are attending certain sessions when they should be. Um, the activity reports you can use for materials you post to Blackboard and want to make sure students are using. Um, 
those two reports, and I don't use them as heavily, more relate to if you have specific assignments within Blackboard, and I'm sure that is the case for many of you. Uh, since I use Cengage to administer and deliver all of my homework and even my assessments, um, I don't rely on those activity reports as much, um, but I, I still find value in them. The statistics report, though, very important. I use that a lot. Um, and I use it for my lectures that I have recorded and, and I record all my live lectures. My in-person lectures are recorded and my virtual class meeting lectures are recorded. And then I use the statistics report specifically for those uh, to see what students are doing. Um, but if you have assignment level or assignments within Blackboard, you can dig into the assignment details uh, they have statistics reports for those. You can look at trends within Blackboard and see, well, what assignments are, are being utilized, what parts of an assignment need to be emphasized more or focused on more. Uh, so very helpful reports. I'll show you when I get back to Blackboard here, the statistics report and how I use it. Uh, but the the other two reports, I, I more lean on Cengage for those activity reports, and I'll show you that piece as well. So Blackboard Analytics, um, the statistic stuff, like I mentioned, is what I use the most. And it's really for me and to tell me to let myself know how are students uh, engaging with Blackboard itself? What what materials are they using? Uh, what do they tend to reference more? And, and then if they are using those materials, um, I know that they are preparing themselves correctly. Or then I know if, if they're not referencing something, I may adjust and change how I or what I post in future semesters. Uh, collaborate analytics show student engagement with the lectures. And that is where I will show and spend some time on in Blackboard because that is huge. And I actually had to share with, with fellow uh, colleagues, other instructors, how to use this feature, but you can actually uh, post your virtual class sessions that you meet and have used, and I'm sure you've used in Blackboard Collaborate. You can post those sessions or those uh, meetings if you're recording them and then you can get statistics on if students are going back to those recordings and using them. And that has changed the game for me. And I'll show you that in a moment here. Um, I also use Collaborate uh, with um, group work. Um, and that's one way students can use or be in groups, do group activities, uh, and still follow the very strict COVID protocols that we are all subject to. Uh, the breakout group feature is excellent in Blackboard. It's a way for students to work with each other. They can, they can even in my courses work with each other um, and not have me there. So if they wanted to meet to work on homework together and they can't in person because of all the restrictions, they can do that through Blackboard through the virtual class structure. Um, but breakout groups are huge for that. And actually I've ad adapted um, at the very beginning of the semester, I record and post everything <laughs> in Blackboard. Um, and, and I do that because just of how quickly things can change. We all know that happened in the winter semester, COVID hit, and then all of a sudden in person to all online. Uh, so I kind of prepared myself for if that were to happen again, how can I make that change that quick? Okay, now everything's online. So how can I make that process more efficient for myself and then better from a student perspective? So I do post everything and, and, I, and I actually record when I meet in person on Monday or Tuesday with my accounting students. Um, we're in a huge room now. <laughs> I'm in the auditorium at Davenport because everyone has to be, you know, six feet apart. Uh, but I'll actually record those sessions. And I wanna share a quick story with you um, at how valuable that is for the students. Um, I have this, and this is a student this semester, she's in my 10 a.m. Um, Tuesday class, uh, but she is from South Africa. and She has not been home in almost two years just because of COVID. She hadn't traveled back before COVID hit for a year because she was taking classes 
She's a student athlete at Davenport. Uh, she plays tennis. Um, but when COVID hit, she was too afraid or couldn't, in some cases, to go home because she then couldn't get back into the country. So she's homesick, basically. Um, but she was in my class. She was a very good student, attending every Tuesday in-person session. But then, and I'm sure some of you have experienced it, the quarantine, the COVID issue. She tested positive, had to quarantine, was super frustrated because she couldn't attend in person. But since I was recording those sessions and then also allowing them to join them live, and you can do that very easily so they can get into the virtual classroom, join that session live, and then participate virtually as if they were actually in class. And she, and, and she is not the only student that's had to quarantine, but absolutely huge. Very, she loved the fact that she could be there virtually, listen as if she was there in person, easy to capture and record that and post it later, even if she couldn't be there in person. Um, and she's freaked out in the beginning, and now she's one of the top performing students right now. So some of the features is just huge. Um, and, and, and if you haven't explored or looked at them yet, I uh, highly recommend doing that. So let me show you quickly the <clears throat> um, Blackboard analytics here. Uh, and I want to spend some time kind of keeping track of how much time I have left here um, on the recorded lectures piece and the statistics report. I'm sure you're all aware when you click on links for anything you have posted, it doesn't have to be recorded lectures, but you have this uh, view statistics report or statistics tracking on or off. Um, the on off tracking, it's defaulted to on, which is nice. Uh, but you have this stats report for everything that you post in Blackboard. And I've learned that you can get that stats report for lectures that you had when you were meeting virtually and recording. You can copy those links, post them in Blackboard in a, in a dedicated area like I have here, the recorded lectures. And then you can um, access the statistics for that report. So I'm going to show you the access and then I'll walk through what I learned and how I got to this point, how to get the stats report. But I'm gonna look in the how to register for C now link. If I do uh, view statistics report here, content usage statistics. So it says right here, this, this report is only gonna di display usage stats for this item in particular, meaning the how to register for Cengage uh, recorded lecture. And that's all I want, I don't want usage for everything, just this one particular item. I'm gonna to go to run here. It will bring me to this screen. <clears throat> um, I want it to PDF, that's fine. You can have it <clears throat> in Excel, whatever you want. Um, and then I also, I'm gonna set it back to the beginning of the semester. So we started in the very beginning of September, and then um, I want it to end today, and then I sh will include all of my students. Submit. Doesn't take too long. If you narrowed the scope of the dates, I selected the entire semester, so it takes a little bit of processing time. Um, but after it's done, it will show you a PDF version that looks like this. So it shows all of your students that accessed this recorded lecture and how many times they accessed it. So you'll see some of my students listed here, how many times they accessed this recorded lecture. Um, it gives you, I mean, a ton of information. Um, what day, what hour they accessed the information. Um, so you'll see, if you're looking, I, don't, I haven't used this part, but it looks like the highest usage is in the ninth hour of a day. Um, what day of the week? Uh, by far Monday. This is a Monday, Wednesday class. So on Monday, probably right after class, they went back in to make sure they were following the registration process. So very helpful. You want to know what your students are doing and if they are using the resources. You know, you talk about them all the time in class. Hey, do this, do that. This tells you if they are actually listening. And if they're not, then you you spend some time in the next meeting, the next virtual or in-person meeting, tell them, hey, I, I, I see none of you are using this reports. I'm answering multiple emails that 
Um, I don't need to because had you watched this lecture, those, those questions would have been answered. Uh, so this usage report for the recorded lectures, I have loved. Um, and, it, and it lets me know what my students are doing. And then I know that they're using the features that I talk about in class. And, and it's just a helpful feature for the recorded lectures. Um, <clears throat> the other report I'll run is actually in the Blackboard Collaborate. And I do this for attendance. Uh, so if you do the view reports in the course room link here, it gives you uh, a report on basically who attended this particular date, what time did they start, what time did they leave. So when I do attendance for my classes, I want to make sure, okay, Kaylee first joined at the very beginning, you know, 10 minutes before class, and then she left at 11.05. Well, class gets done at 11.50, so she didn't stay the whole time. What's going on? Um, and then this particular example from today was the midterm, so she just finished the midterm early. Um, that's helpful with attendance, because I know I don't want to count someone as attending who showed up for five minutes and then left. So plenty of reports um, that you can run and do in Blackboard. The usage reports for the recorded lecture, I uh, recommend that one the most. And how you get to this, and I have a summary slide that hopefully Blackboard will make available to you, but how you get to the usage reports, stats reports for, for lectures that you have recorded. Uh, you go to where all of your recordings are housed in Blackboard here. So you go into, like you were gonna enter the virtual classroom, come down to your recordings. You'll see I have three pages of recordings so far. We're eight weeks into this semester. Um, and I do a lot of smaller recordings rather than just one big two hour recording. Um, and that just helps students um, find the information quicker. They're not you know, waiting or finding, fast forwarding, rewinding through an hour long lecture. Although I don't, you know, sometimes I don't always do that. Here's an hour long one. Um, but to get to the stats report, um, you have to copy the link here. So this particular recording, I want to first make sure it's available public, publicly. So you want to click that. Have to do that so students can access the link outside of this page here. They can always come in here and find all of this. They would see the same thing I'm looking at here, um, but this doesn't make any sense. They don't know when, when, what was discussed in these recordings. So doing this process, you'll see the usage go up in the recording. Uh, so allow public access, do that, and then copy the link. And I have a summary slide of all of this. So it may seem like I'm going quickly right now, uh, but this summary slide explains step-by-step step how to do this. So I copy that link, and then I have the dedicated course top-level link here for recorded lectures. Um, I have it organized by chapter in this case. So this one was chapter eight and midterm review. I would go into this folder build content, um, and then I want a web link. And then I'll just simply paste that link here. And then I will label it. What did we talk about? Oh, we talked about LIFO, FIFO, or specifically what was discussed in this uh, recorded lecture. And that will help students use the recording le recorded lecture. And then also gets you that statistical information. You hit submit. And then you're good to go. I'm going to go back into Blackboard or uh, the PowerPoint here. Almost towards the end. Let's see, this is the summary slide. So uh, I just showed you really quickly how to do it in Blackboard. Uh, this is a step-by-step -step process and not only how to post your collaborate lectures, um, into a, a dedicated area and a course menu link in Blackboard. Um, this is how to access those reports. Runs you down the, the uh, items I did to get the statistics report. Um, so I'm gonna go to the next slide here, um, but certainly hopefully this is something you can reference. I'm sure Alex will share with you my contact information and I'm more than happy to do any follow-up that is, that is required here. Uh, so the last piece uh, of the presentation this afternoon is Cengage Analytics. Um, 
I use these for um, my lectures. I, I mean, making my lectures better. Um, I, I primarily look at the Cengage analytics for my pre-assignment activity. Uh, the intention and in, in what I preach to students is to do the pre-assignment activity before our second class meeting each week. And that is so I can go in and look at the analytics of those um, of that pre-assignment for that week. Um, and Cengage has so much features here. You can look at an assignment level analytic. You can look at learning objective analytics. And I use the learning objectives to uh, make sure my courses are meeting syllabus uh, learning outcomes. And then it goes all the way down to the question level. Uh, so this, it, and it's quick to analyze this information, but I will analyze this information, look at the data, and then by the time we meet for my second lecture, I'll tailor that lecture to where students uh, need the help. And it is just an awesome resource to be able to use. I'm going to go back into Blackboard uh, really quickly. You know, I, I first see our students attending the lectures by using the Blackboard Analytics feature. Are they watching recorded lectures after the fact? Use Blackboard Analytics for that. And then I use Cengage to see, OK, what do I need to spend time with or spend time on in my next lecture? So I know a lot of you may not use Cengage. I know Cengage and their other disciplines offers features similar to this. Uh, so you may need to or want to explore that. Um, I'm just going to really quickly show you because it's so awesome and how it works. The analytics feature for this class. I know we're kind of getting towards the end of the time and I want I want there to be time left for questions. But here is the Cengage interface and this is their grade book. I already hid the student name so we don't have to worry about that. But the reports, so easy Cengage makes it. Just simply hit reports, grade book analytics. This is the assignment level. You'll see my pre-assignment activities in here. Um, I'll go to the chapter one pre-assignment before our second lecture and see, okay, what collectively do students not do well with? And this is an introductory uh, uh, level assignment. So, and, and these results are a bit skewed. My students, yes, looks like they did very, very well on this, but this is um, after we've had that second lecture. So we've met again and talked about specifically what they struggled on initially, and then they get to go back into this activity and improve their score. So we can, I wish I had a before and after of, and it was a midterm week this week, otherwise I would have, um, before what the results are here and then after what the results um, tend to be. Um, but this is, I mean, the, the question level here. So we look at, okay, this is a question from chapter one about an income statement or a statement of owner's equity rather. So they struggled with this. This was the lowest scoring activity in the pre-assignment. I'm going to talk about this in that second class meeting. I'm gonna focus on, okay, statement of owner's equity. We're gonna do group work on it in the breakout sessions in Blackboard or in person, we're gonna work in groups. We're going to do examples. We're going to make sure students understand how to create the statement. And I have that because Cengage gives me that information. Um, if I wanted to meet, you know, we all have department goals and standards or university standards to, to meet, to measure against. I heavily use the learning objectives feature here. Um, I know for my financial accounting course, I need to make sure students can illustrate uh, that they understand or can create financial statements for a merchandising, a multi-step financial statement. It's a specific learning objective. Create a multi-step income statement listed on my syllabus. Um, I need to do external reporting for that. And then if they ask me, if they audit my reporting, how do you know your students are meeting this learning outcome? I can come in here and say, well, look, here's describe and illustrate. These are the questions that I have assigned that relate specifically to the financial statements for a merchant. And this is how my students perform. So huge piece to satisfy the external reporting requirements for your institutions, which I'm sure many institutions have. We call it Davenport, the Davenport Excellent System and a bunch of metrics I need to measure uh, my courses against and then my student performance against. Cengage gives me the, that um, 
support. So last little bit here. Uh, my broadband is kind of sped through the end here, but again, I want to be able to answer your questions today. So hopefully we're going to get to that. Um, just to wrap it up briefly, um, what is what is the point of my whole presentation today? I know a ton of information was shared, but it's really improving your course and 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 having the organization initially, um, and then having that organization to be able to use the analytics that are available and the software that you are given to do um, administer your courses is huge. Getting it organized and set up first, and then having that out of the way so you can focus on the analytics. And seeing just how easy Blackboard and, and Cengage makes it to have that data available. Um, it's helped my lectures. My lectures have become more focused. I mean, how many of you have asked students in person or virtually, hey, this portion of time is set aside if you have homework questions? Does anyone have anything they want to talk about? and you hear silence. Silence is more prevalent virtually than in person. No one wants to say anything. And you're like, well, and then you go and look at the homework and students aren't getting a concept. They clearly struggled on creating an income statement for chapter one. No one did well on that activity. Why didn't they say anything about it in, in person or virtually? Um, you know, you don't have to ask that question. You can go to the analytics and see, okay, in the pre-assignment, everyone is struggling with the income statement. So instead of posing that question and hearing crickets, you can just go into, we're gonna focus on income statements today. Students are like, great, that's what I had a question about. I don't even have to ask about it because we're already gonna talk about it. Huge, it changes everything. And students just love that aspect. They feel like they're getting the most out of the virtual classes. Um, even the in-person classes too. And then I know I already talked about it, but mapping to the learning outcomes that your institution set, um, my assignments have improved with the sequence method and then making sure they all relate to each other. Um, also, you know, letting students know that you can see what they're doing. You can track, are they watching these recordings? And you can do it by a, or to the student level. So you can see X student is saying that, they don't know how to register for Cengage or they don't know a concept because it wasn't explained. Well, you can go in and see, did you watch the recorded lecture? Did you participate in this activity? Did you download the notes um, that are posted on Blackboard? If you, if, and, and you can show them that even you, you didn't do those things, do those things and you will understand and you will improve your scores. You will do better on major assessments. And then it just encourages, it gives you the facilitation to encourage better learning. Um, you know, when, when we have focused le lectures, better assignments, um, students feel like they're getting the most out of the virtual classes, which is always a struggle right now because it's so new to them and so different than what they're used to. Um, if all of that feels value added to the students, then you are, you're promoting an environment that has a better learning experience. Um, and that is what we're all here for. We want students to learn. We don't want them to go through the motions. Um, we want to see them, you know, grow and become and turn into the professionals that they are going to school to become. Um, so it's really, you know, it's awesome to see that it's, it's, it's great in the fact that Blackboard and Cengage has resources to allow you to do these things. It's just a matter of actually doing them and then implementing implementing these improvements. Um, but I'm sure uh, Alex will warn me or not. I'm probably at the end of my time here, so I do want to leave it leave it open for any questions. Um, I'm sure you've been letting Alex know if there are any. Um, I'm happy to answer any of those now. I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend some time with me and learn about Blackboard or how I use Blackboard and then send it.